All of us are here in person one last time before Zach moves down to Florida. Today we have MLB news as well as our top 10 catchers list. The NHL playoffs are almost to the final. The NBA finals are heating up as the Celtics win a big game three at home. And later we'll be predicting and discussing our expectations for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We also have a huge anniversary in sports that is happening today and tomorrow, but we'll get to that later. Uh, you guys probably won't like it too much. But uh, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> does this have to do with LeBron? Uh -huh. Of course it does. Mm -hmm. Time to just roast you on LeBron today. Yeah. I'm doing good. I haven't really done much today at all. Uh, just getting ready to move on Monday down to Florida. Yeah. So I really actually haven't really packed anything yet. So. It came fast. Yeah. Yeah, I've been mm -hmm. solid. Um, I haven't done much either. Been working the last couple of days, landscaping. So much fun. But, uh, <laughs> very sunburnt. Let's um, say the heat's been pretty bad with uh, that, right? I got so sunburnt get really on Tuesday, hot. like my back that like it hurt to just wear a shirt. Yeah. Like I couldn't sleep on my I back. Hate, I hate whenever bad. you get sunburnt and you take a shower and it just hurts. And then I went to watch the new Jurassic World yesterday. It was booty. It was awful. Was it? Yeah, it was bad. Mm. That was very disappointing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there's not a whole lot else going on. You weren't here when we talked about it, but are you, are you more of a summer guy or a winter? In terms of just in general? Yeah. Summer. I don't like the cold. Okay. I'd much rather be hot than cold. And you agree with that? I know you, you're more of a winter. I'm glad I kind of like all the – all the, they, they both <laughs> are like, like pros and each. Spring or fall. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I like being outside in the summer – um carnal games do a lot of stuff outside yeah. uh winter skiing snow i yeah, like snow. I love snow man college football basketball there's always something good going yeah. on yeah yeah um i also have a new look uh are you guys rocking with the look you, it won't hurt my feelings if you say no it's not awful it's not awful i like it i don't look like a pedophile no, <laughs> no you don't. i'm just kidding um I mean, I wouldn't hire you, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm just going to do it for the summer. That's, that's my plan, probably. And then fall and winter, get it, get it back to the beard. But um, I actually have a Did You See It today. Do you guys have a couple? Uh, I actually, yeah, yeah, I got one. I mean, I can find it. I, I can do mine first, actually, real quick. Yeah, you can go. Um, mine was a, a stat that I saw, and I actually showed both of you guys it or sent it to you guys. Oh, yeah. This is funny. This is a weird stat. Like, <laughs> Uh, I think it was John Boy's page that posted oh, it. Uh, apparently, Mookie Betts has 194 career home runs, which is the most in MLB history by a player with the initials MLB. <laughs> it's one of the weirdest. Like, they keep doing stats like this, I, I feel like. <laughs> Baseball has, like, the weirdest game. stats. It's ridiculous. It's like ESPN does this, too. Like, uh, it's a NBA player. <laughs> and... They get like some stat and they're like the first player to have 23 point above 23 points, yeah. seven rebounds, <laughs> and two assists in a, a like eight game 82 of the, the last game of the year. Mm -hmm. Something weird. Yeah, there's stats for everything. They like to uh pull them out at all times. My uh my did you see it is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL, Hunter Renfro, also known as third in Renfro, got a contract extension, two years, 32 million. Including 21 million guaranteed. Wow. And this is a guy who walked on at Clemson. Yeah. So, wow. Just, wow. Oh, um, I have one. This is the first time since 1979 that uh, a teammate of Yarmir Yager will not be in the Stanley Cup finals. That's insane. So, That's crazy. Yeah. Like, That's what, absolutely insane. 43 years. Yeah. So. Also, I sent you something that uh, I'm sure a lot of people know, but I never realized that in Vegas they had, uh, you could be in the pool and also play back. Yeah. Jack. That was sweet. That was cool. With that stat, there's something like with Sha I think it was no, it's the Knicks. For the last 50 years, there's been an NBA player in the finals that has been a Nick at one point. This year it's Luke Cornett, which is like a oh yeah, bench warmer for the Celtics. But there was one with Shaq too. It it ended though. Or was it Shaq? It was like a teammate of Shaq's or something. Shaq played on so many teams. Yeah, exactly. At the end of his career. Um, but unless you guys have anything else, we can get it going with our worst. Uh, top 10 list here, probably. Top 10 catchers. So I didn't write down my honorable mentions, but there's a couple I left off. Tyler Stevenson's probably the most notable one now because he's hitting really well for the Reds. But um, do you guys have anything before we get started? 
No, it's just like kind of just a mess outside yes. of the top like five, four or five. It's pretty arbitrary. Oh, yeah. So, yep. My honorable mention is uh, Alejandro Kirk. He got bumped Ooh, down. Okay. All right. So my 10 was Alejandro Kirk, uh, Blue Jays catcher. He he qualifies as a catcher, but he's really a DH for them. He, he plays he a lot of a, DH. I won't say fat. That's mean. Large man. He is a large man and a very short man, which doesn't doesn't help with short that. Short king. Five foot eight, two forty five. Uh, <clears throat> only twenty two years old. He looks a lot older than twenty three. Um, but dude, dude's raking this Does year. Does he have a mustache? Uh, or really go to beard. He's got like a scruffy beard okay. with a mustache. I excited but... his page and I was like, hold on. Is that why <laughs> no, uh, he's got five homers this year, sixteen RBIs, batting three twenty two with an eight seventy eight OPS, and besides. I mean, he's probably a top five catcher hitting this year. Yeah. Um, which he's one of those guys I love watching because it's like it's so – like you don't see it very often, a guy of his stature. Like he can turn on a baseball like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, um, But, yeah, he's a lot of fun to watch. I don't know how much catcher he will be playing because, again, his, his body does, doesn't really fit the uh, everyday positional player, but yeah. he was my number 10. My number 10, Yadi. Yadier uh-huh. Molina. How to get him in at like going into this, I was like, I don't think Yadi's gonna make it. But after looking at how awful catchers are at baseball, yeah. Heck, Yadi's just as good as any of them now. Last year he had 11 homers and 66 RBIs, and the top five guys basically are the only people who, who can compare to that. Yeah. Um, and I guess his defense is like uh, not as good because he's older, but it's Yadi or Molina. Like, I let me think. I just think he's still pretty high up there in a lot of this stuff. People still don't steal on him. Yeah, he no. is uh, first and active. Um, what was it? Caught stealing, right? Yeah, at forty percent. First ballot Hall of Famer. I, Hall of I, Famer. I, I, yeah, I think, he, I think he will be. I don't know if they'll put him in. I don't think. Ballot. I don't think they'll put him in. I, I think it's not first no ballot. first ballot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I think it's just because of his offense. Yeah. You know, I think his off. I mean, you look at his career average. What is it? Two seventy eight. Pretty good. Two seventy eight, two eighty, something like that. Yeah. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Two seventy nine. Yeah. So I mean, people. Two seventy nine. <laughs> yeah, they didn't think. I mean, obviously, we were shoot three or four years old when he started, but I know just from researching, they didn't expect him to be anything like this, and he's no. exceeded those expectations. He's a thousand RBIs. Not bad for a catcher. Yeah. Yeah. He ain't like uh, Pudge Rodriguez, who was an yeah. insanely good hitter. He has over 2,000 heads. Obviously, Johnny Bench, too. Yeah. Johnny's a but freak. he has 10 or not, ten All-Stars, nine gold gloves, silver slugger, four could, platinum gloves, two World Series. Could have a couple three. more gold gloves. Yeah. There was one I remember Brad Austin yeah. stole it, and that was, an, that was a terrible. But. Um, my ten is Tucker Barnhart. He's pretty uh, – Mediocre, I guess. But so is like ninety <laughs> percent. Uh, but yeah, he's normally slightly above average, like hitting wise, and he's a uh, big plus defensively. I think he's, he's won two Gold Gloves uh, most recently. I think uh, not last year, two years ago. Does that sound right? When he's with the Reds, yeah. yeah, the Tigers now. Yeah. So yeah, that's my ten. My number nine was Dalton Varsho, and he hasn't. It's kind of like it's kind of like what Zach roasted me on. A, week ago or so with the Jazz Chisholm thing is that he doesn't have a lot of experience behind what he had, like, in his past, I guess. And he's a pretty good average, too. It's not a very good average. Uh, <laughs> so this year, it's 238, eight homers, 24 RBIs, 728 OPS. But for me, it's like, on all these lists, I'm taking a lot of future, like, what I think they'll be as well. And so with Dalton, he's only 25. It's only been the league two years, three, I guess three altogether now. But he uh, is one of those, and I mentioned it a couple weeks ago, he's very versatile in what he can do. So he, he'll play center field, he'll play second base, he'll play catcher. Mm-hmm. It's just a weird combination of, of players. I think he's super fun to watch. He does a little bit of everything. He runs really well. Uh, I think he had only three stolen bases this year, but he can, he can get you 15-20 just from his speed. I've seen it. In person, in the outfield, he tracked down a couple of balls that I was like, "That's a catcher moving out there." So uh, I don't know. He's one of those like weird, unique players that I kind of, kind of find fun and whatever. But so he's that's my, your number nine. He's my number nine. Yeah, I have uh, Mike Zunino, Zunino, yeah, as uh, my number nine. And also a funny thing that um, I think yesterday they had a uh, Mike Zunino bobblehead, 
and he's actually from born in Florida. He went to college in Florida and he plays with Tampa now. And they made a bobblehead where he had, there's like he was in cut off shorts, a cut off shirt, and there's like a gator between his legs. Oh my Florida gosh. boy. But um, like he is a dreadful average career average 200, but he had 33 home runs and 62 RBIs, which I feel like you can live with uh, a 216 average and 301 on base percentage. And uh, he's a he's above average defender too. He has had above over positive defensive run saves in every year but one in, in 2020, which he only played 28 games. So he's good behind the plate and can smash some balls out there in the, the pack Tropicana field. Mm -hmm. He also, he won that, whatever the, he was also an all-star last year. College player. I know Hobie Baker's the NHL one. That's the only name I'm thinking of. But the college baseball player of the year, he won that. Cause he you oh, said really? he went to Florida. Yeah. He won that coming out. And I remember thinking like, he's going to be a stud, but got a lot of power. Just the average hasn't shown up. But if, as we continue through these, not a lot of average. No, showing up. terrible. Yeah, not at all. Um, that's why my number nine, I'm switching here right now. Um, so I have my nine is uh, Jacob Stallings. Uh, he's batting below the old Mendoza. You know, <laughs> nice. He's batting 197 this year. Yeah. But he's been okay in years past, batting around 250. Um, but he's a solid defender as well. He won, glove. he won it last year. Yes. Yeah. So he's got a gold glove. He's a good defender. Yeah. Um, Hopefully the average picks up, but we'll see. Catcher's uh, <clears throat> kind of trending downward. He's also 6'7", something like that. He's a big boy. He's 6'5", maybe. 6'5", yeah. Uh, and his dad, I get all nerdy stat here, but uh, his dad's the head coach, or was, I, I guess, at Vanderbilt for basketball. Oh, really? Yeah. But um, my number eight was Travis Darno, and I think it's more of an experience thing. He's, he's played – the health – now looking at his games played, his health has not been very – it's not been durable. And you asked why I didn't put him on my list. <laughs> um, this year, he's had a tremendous start, I think, besides his on base percentage, which is 294. He's got six high for catcher. He's got uh, six homers, 24 RBIs, a 252 average, a 731 OPS. Um, yeah, I don't know what much else to say about him. He's a World Series catcher um, with them. But, but yeah, Travis was my number eight. I have Omar Narvaez. I'm pretty sure I pronounced that correctly mm -hmm. as my number eight. Um, probably one of the best hitting catchers in the league, I'd say. Maybe not for power, for average at a, a career average of 267 and on base at 352, but that's pretty good for a catcher. He was an all star last year, played 123 games, had 11 homers, 49 RBIs, like solid, nothing spectacular, but. Um, good production from the catcher spot. His one drawback is he's not a great defender. Um, this year, yeah, he's negative defense run saves this year, last year. Wait, no. Yes, negative this year. He had three last year, two in 2020, zero in 2019, and then, no, wait, 2019 he had negative 18 defense run saves. So <laughs> he's been getting better, but still. Has I, just, I like, thought he was a gold glover nope. last year. I, no. I mean, it must have been the all star appearance. Yes, he was an all star. That, that's what I was thinking. Um, I have Travis Starno here as well. Um, again, there's a guy on this list that I just keep bumping up. Now I'm looking at <laughs> stats a little more. Um, but yeah, AJ, Who is it? AJ pretty much covered everything. He's having a good year this year, but he's there's only been three three seasons in his career where he's played more than 75 games. So, how that's, many years has he been in the league? 10. Nine, 10, 10. Jeez, that's awful. Dirt so, yeah, that is not good. Yeah. Uh, so that's why he's dropping <laughs> or he dropped. So we'll see if uh, that's why he didn't even get on my see if I just keep bumping up my boy here. So oh. <laughs> <I know. laughs> my number seven was, was Mitch Garver for the uh, Texas Rangers. He's got seven homers, 16 RBIs this year, batting 206 with a 680 OPS. Um, I go back to that year in 2019 where he batted 273 with a 365 on base percentage, had 31 homers and 67 RBIs. 2020, Mitch Garver. Yeah. 2020, he wasn't healthy. Uh, 2021, he also wasn't healthy. Uh, but he had a decent year. How many he, games has he played since uh, that really good season? Um, holy cow, guys. In that really good season, he only played 93 games and had 31 homers. Jeez. Wow. If only he stays healthy. What's yeah. what's the what's the average for that? Was he, was he on pace for sixty homers almost? That's insane. That is crazy. Um, 
but no, 2020 wasn't healthy. 2021 wasn't healthy. This year he's been healthy. Uh, terrible average, terrible on base percentage. So he deserves that number seven spot. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm trusting that uh, 31 homer year. Uh, has, no one's been trusted. <laughs> um, my number, what around seven? Uh-huh. My number seven, Sean Murphy. You guys probably don't have him on his list, your list, but uh, yeah, it was a gold glove last year. Hit 17 home for the A's, 17 home runs, 59 RBIs, 119 games. Had a stellar average at uh, 216 on base percentage at 306. So that's pretty good for catchers, as we've been seeing. Um, really good def- defensive player, and I think catchers is maybe the part of their game defense needs to be the most important part. Yeah, I would say then compared to any other position. He had 10 defense more than saved last year. Just a awesome uh, defensive player. Who you got? Uh, I'm debating now. <laughs> um, I have Yasmani Grandal here. That's uh, seven. 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 He, uh, he's, I mean, he's a solid hitter. He's been a solid hitter for a long time, but not super durable. He doesn't. He's, he hasn't played as like that many. Oh wait, just kidding. Just kidding. That's a lot. He is pretty. He is pretty durable. Um, <laughs> so that's why he's on my list in the first place. But he's batting 167 this year, and that, we just can't have that any higher than uh, seven. How did he do last year though? Last year, batted 240 with 23 home runs. What was his on base? But he's a horrible <laughs> defender. He's been first yeah. in the league in pass balls like four or five times. Sure. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, he's a... He's I don't know what it is about, like, now be network. Catcher. They just... They love him. him. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he uh, has committed the fifth most errors as a catcher, active. Um, nice. And he's allowed the third most stolen bases. So... So, Yasmani was my number six. Yeah, I just, I just uh, kind of bumped him down in my order real quick now, too. <laughs> uh, two homers this year, 12 RBIs, like 167 average, like you mentioned. But, again, his on-base percentage is ridiculously good, um, usually. He had a 420 on-base last year, which is nice. just good. Uh, 20, <laughs> 20 really good. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, 23 homers, 62 RBIs. His OPS but, was almost one. That's Yeah, it was. That, that stretch of – Let's see, 2016 to 19, 25 homers roughly a year. So uh, definitely has has the power, and he's getting older, though, uh, getting up there. He's almost 34. So, um, yeah, like you mentioned, though, terrible defender, uh, but can get on base. So he's my number six. Uh, my number six is, I don't think any of you guys have on your list, Tyler Stevenson. Wow. And um, he arguably – He's probably a better hitter than Omar Navarez. Last year, he played 132 games with Cincinnati. He's uh, – when he was 24, he's 25 now. He hit 10 homers, had 45 RBIs, walked – or only struck out 75 times, so under 100. I think that's good nowadays. <laughs> um, batted 286, had 366 on-base percentage. Um, and this year, through 41 games, he has five homers, 31 RBIs, which is pretty good. Um, 309 average and 366 on base. And, like, he is really young, but last year was basically a full season, and he hit extremely well. And he's he's doing even better now in 41 games. He almost has close to the same amount of RBIs as he had. Um, last year and halfway to the home runs, he's, like, a decent – he's, like, middle of the road. He uh, he had uh, wait, three defense runs saved last year, and he has negative one so far, but – it's been like 30 something. He's another big boy. Yeah. 6'4, 225 pounds. Yeah. My six uh, is my boy out of here. <laughs> Finally. I'm going to get a bunch of heat for that because he's old, but he is so durable. He hits well. He's kind of, I mean, obviously. Doesn't strike out. He's, he's, getting, play. he's yeah. getting older. He's he also doesn't down. Play. He's also one of the slowest <laughs> players in the league. Um, but he's got, what, uh, nine cold gloves? Nine. nine. A nine, yeah. got nine gold gloves. Poor player. I mean, yeah, he's fantastic player. You can't tell me anyone that I've had on my list before that you would rather them on your team right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, just what he does from from the like calling the game perspective, like everything like that. He just controls the game completely. He's one of the like 
I think he's the active leader in caught stealing percentage, like you said. 40 Yeah, and even yeah. now, like this year, it, I think it's still in the 40s, right? It's still very high. And people like, don't Also, try. yeah, if people don't even attempt it because they're terrified of the man. Also, you can go to this stat. Like, he's given up, um, I think I looked, it was like 552 stolen bases. There's a stat where it shows Cardinals versus everyone else stolen bases given up. Cardinals, he – Catchers are giving up 900, and the next – Yeah. The, they were the lowest, and then the next one was, like, 1,400. And then you look at it, and Yachty's – 400 of those were yeah. by a pack of catchers. Yeah. And Yachty plays over 100 games every year. He yeah. also – It's crazy. I, I think you might agree with me. We I didn't even have him on my list. You put him lower probably because I did – I didn't because of the bias thing. But, like you said, if I'm just – if like take away all these weird stats and like everything, and we'll you take just, away age, yeah, to, to age, take away he'd age. be number one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you take away all this like on base percentage or future or whatever. Like, who do I want to catch a ball game for me? It's him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, screw the offense at this point. Literally, yeah. just just his defensive ability. He. I mean, he lets some go that now because he's older. Yeah. And his, I've seen a couple this year where they've kind of run out of his hand a little bit and, mm -hmm. and gone to center field or led Tommy astray or whatever, but just actually, I don't know if there's a stat of just calling the game. Like, I know he still – You can't you just – that's just like an intangible. I think he's – really factor. I think he's like – I saw some stats of the Carmel game. I know I'm going to butcher it wrong, but he's like maybe – I think he's second all-time in catching sh shutouts. Okay. I think. And right now he's second in the league in framing. Remember we talked about that yeah. where just stealing pitches, so. Mm -hmm. So basically we all agree, yeah, he should be number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, where are we at? Seven or five? I was about to say six, and that's it. Um, five is Omar Narvaez for me. Uh, two homers, 10 RBIs this year, 274 average, but only played in 32 games. Last year was an all-star, so one of the top three catchers at at least the all-star break last year. And in 2019, he had 22 homers for the Mariners. We had 278, 353 on base percentage. Um, then I guess I think he signed a free agency to Milwaukee. I don't think he was traded. I think he signed there. Yeah, and uh, has been has been their catcher and done a pretty pretty good job of it. Been their catcher. He's, I think he's a top five catcher in baseball, and um, I don't. I think if he wouldn't have gotten injured this year, his average has been good. His homers and RBIs, I think, would be higher, and I think he'd be in the All Star running again. I have uh, Will Smith at number five. Wow. Um, what? <laughs> where do you have him? Four? Three? I, I think one. Two? We'll, we'll get to where I have him. I think he was like one of the best catchers of baseball last year. Yeah, he's well, yeah. Year, yeah, last year. Yeah, last year. We'll he's he's playing good this year. He's just a little younger. These other guys above him have a lot more years and are been super consistent and durable. He played 130 games last year. Before that, the most games he played was 54 in those in two years. It was 54 and 37, then 130. Um, but last year he had 25 home runs, 76 RBIs, and I think he's going to be – he could be number one at some point. Like, he's hitting really good. He's um, – How old is he? 27. Okay. He is solid defender. Um, he has four defense runs saved this year. Last year he had five. Yeah, so he's he, he gets the job done. Um, but, like, a catcher hitting 25 home runs and 76 RBIs, you don't find that no. – Except in some of the people ahead of them, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so I have Tyler Stevenson here uh, talking about wow yeah, guys. With, I'm happy you with, put him on with dur durability and uh, the experience. No, he's in his sophomore season, but last year he batted 286 with uh, 10 homers, and this year he's batting over 300. Uh, yeah, he's got a whole, whole hell. He's got a whole hell of a lot of potential, yeah. and I just yeah, I'm excited. Very uh, large man. Yes. So. So my number four We're not fat though. No, no, just yeah, no. jacked. Um, my number four was Wilson Contreras. Oh, my mother is calling this <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, Wilson was my, my number four. He was this year probably the best catcher in baseball. Um, would you agree with that? Even though he's a cubby. Um so because this year, 10 homers, 23 RBIs, 277 average, and a 933 OPS. But I saw somebody say this on MLB Network, and so I, I researched it, and it's true. He hasn't been able to put it all together in one season. Because in 2019, he was he only played 105 games. 
Yeah. But had 24 homers and 64 RBIs. I mean, he would have been a 30 homer catcher. Yeah. Bad over 270. I mean, he's not, I guess he's kind of durable. He's pretty durable. And he's got a cannon still. Yeah. I mean, what is not it? sometimes wild. Yeah. He's, he's erratic with it, but he's got, he's 30 now, which seems old because I he's remember 30. Isn't that wild? I thought, I thought he was like 26. I was thinking 27. Yeah. Wilson Contreras is 30 years old now that Commons back. I don't mm-hmm. know if that surprises you as much as us, but. Do you think he was younger? Or yeah, he was younger. Um, but no, he's got, still got a cannon of an arm. And uh, probably going to be a big trade piece at this deadline oh, yeah, coming he's up. He's gone. Oh, is that it? Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Number four for me, Yasmani Grandal. Um, I bumped him down because they're talking about him like, yeah, he's a. I feel like good. I feel like you're an on base guy. I I do like on base percentage. I think that's really important. Mm-hmm. And his averages, like as we've seen, only like two catchers have higher averages than like two forty that we've talked about so far. Um, he hits power as a catcher, which is not super common, I guess. I guess, um, like AJ said, he had that stretch where he hit like twenty five, roughly twenty five home runs four years in a row. Last year he had twenty three home runs six. D2 RBIs, 240 fan average, 420 on base, and almost a one OPS. This year he's sucked, so he may not be in the top 10 next year. But um, I think his offensive ability just kind of bumps him up a little bit. And as we've said, he is, uh, yeah, very bad at defense. Wait, hold up a second. He's had some positive, uh, he may not be good at pass balls, but he has had some positive defense runs saved. Like, not not recently. Yeah, <laughs> he was with the Dodgers. <laughs> he had like twelve and eighteen. And I feel like I said this a couple times already, but he's a big big man as well, right? Yeah, six two. Uh, not a, he's Tyler Stevenson, but three inch or two inches shorter. Okay. Yeah, that's all. That's uh, my let me pull my rankings here. Kind of figure out what the, four. Oh, four. I have uh, Will Smith. He had a really good year last year. But this year, he's having a pretty solid year still, but uh, not as good as last year. But, yeah, I mean, we pretty much hit on him already. So, yeah, he's he's my number four. And he's a young guy, though. He's got a lot of potential. So. Will Smith was my number three. And um, this year, seven homers, 26 RBIs, 235 average. But last year was ridiculously good. Uh, 260 average, 365 on base percentage, 860 OPS. Um Play, I guess, at 130 of the 162, 25 homers. And then in 2019, only played 54 games and had 15 homers. So, uh, like like we mentioned, 27, is that what we said? 27. 27. Yeah, 27. So, yeah, I have high expectations for him uh, moving forward. I think, like you mentioned, he could be a number one down the line. Yeah. Um, My number three oh, – wait, did you do – yeah, that's number three. three. Yeah. My number three is Salvador Perez. Had an insane year last year, but like I was looking at his other stats, he had to have been like doing something different, like maybe like actually staying in shape or hitting the, the something. Because yeah, the most home runs he had before hitting forty eight was twenty seven. Wow, he literally had twenty seven home runs and eighty RBIs two years in a row. That was that's crazy, but um, super durable. Same amount of games those two years too. Well, that's really weird. <laughs> well. Uh, Almost the same amount of doubles, too. <laughs> okay, back on track. Um, <laughs> um, super consistent, proven, very durable. Last year was by far his best year of his career. He's a um, five-time gold glover, seven-time all-star, four-time silver slugger. But uh, looking at this year, that kind of made me drop him a little bit. He's not pitting good at all. He's been 202. On his way to the Hall of Fame? How old is he? 31? 32. 32? I think he can get there. Uh, I think he can. Yeah. I don't want he needs to, to hit. He has 1,197 hits. Yadi has over 2,000. Yeah. I don't, I'm not. I bet he'll if turn he, in, If he gets to maybe like close to three, over 350 home runs, I think he's going to turn into a DH. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. was looking, I was thinking whenever you're talking about Will Smith, I'm like, a lot of, I was thinking about his stats. A lot of catchers, their stats aren't as good because when they play like 130 games because yeah. they're catching. But last year, Salvi played 161 because he DH'd whenever he didn't catch. That's right. And I think he honestly DH's more probably than he catches. We're going to see that now with the DH in the National League. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're going to see 
I mean, obviously, Yachty's numbers are way down because I think we talked about it before you got here that Kizzer's starting for the third straight day today. Yeah. So, I mean, he's just not playing. They're well. trying to give just – It's almost like Wayno's personal catcher now. Right? Yeah, they, they <laughs> want to get that record. Yeah. But, yeah, Selby is a great player. I Yeah, he could be – I think these top three could switch either one. Yeah. I think they all could be really good. Yeah. Uh, my three is Wilson Contreras. Uh, I mean, we covered pretty much everything on him, but I hope he goes somewhere where – they're competitive. I like. I don't like him because he's always been a cub and he's always like been competing with Yachty, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, he's having a really good year. I mean, he's had a really good career as well. Um, he's also he's the he's got the Hispanic fire to him. Yeah. So like, kind of if you if you're if he's playing against your team, it will probably rub you the wrong way. Right. Yeah. But kind of like anyone who's not a Cardinal fan probably hates Yachty. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But I mean, you want a guy like that on your team, definitely. Um, so yeah. I don't know. He can. I don't know where he'll go. If he goes anywhere, I guess, if they want to try to build around him. You don't see catcher's <laughs> moves a whole lot. No, not at no. all. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on. Yeah, and you never think about it because how are the pitchers? Like, you kind of have to get used exactly. to your catcher. So going mid, calling halfway him. through the year, it's kind of a big change. I never really thought about that. My number uh, two. They did avoid arbitration yesterday so with his contract. I, do you think there's any chance they keep him? I do, yeah. Like if the Cubs are smart, which they're not, they they're in a big market. They should have a ton of money just to go for people. Mm-hmm. See a free agent after this year? I think so. Probably. That's yeah. probably one. Literally, if they trade away their whole core, it's, it's gone. gone. Yeah. Literally, they're either we gonna were good. To, they're either gonna have to build around and pay them a lot of money, or they're gonna have to just ship them out and get something. Yeah. Like we were good, like solid before. They're really good. They had their whole peak of being good, and are now like done and we're still get like solid yeah, yeah. it's just like crazy. i can't picture in the next 10 years us being the cardinals being like non-competitive yeah non-competitive yeah. um and we, we will at least play 500 races yes <laughs> yeah. i don't think we've been under 500 since 2007 i think i saw that the other day <laughs> Jay, <laughs> I, just, I just jinxed it <laughs> yeah um, the other day we we're Hanging out, watching the Cardinal game, and AJ just said, "Oh, Rahegan's having a great year." And I was, I was thinking to myself, like, I'm sure his ERA is like five. Like, he's like, yeah. he has not been playing. Well. He's like, oh yeah, he could be in some high pressure situations. And, you. and AJ was also, what, what else did you say? Well, you were, oh, you were like, oh, we're only a half a game out of the Brewers, and then because we were up, what it was two, two one, two one, two one, two outs, bottom of the ten, two outs, two runners on. Yeah, two runners on. And AJ says this, and like three pitches later, the guy hits one off the foul pole and wins the game. <laughs> <laughs> so we go a game back of the Brewers and uh, Verhagen. And we got uh, swept blows, for the first time this year. And the <laughs> earlier that night, AJ was also like, oh, the Cardinals have only lost two series all year. Uh, they've never been swept. Well, they get swept two days later. I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm just going to head out, guys. Big time, big time jeep. So yeah, you and your mustache get out of here. <laughs> See, Verhagen had – he was on the IL, and then he had three appearances that got his ERA done like 312. And I was like, oh, man, like – He's been pitching really well, and then I should just cut my mouth shut. All right, what, what number are we on? Uh, two. We're on two. two, yeah. So my number two is JT Ramuto. And talk about durability as a catcher. Holy cow. 130-plus um, games in just about every year, it seems like. Uh, all, career 273 hitter, has power, um, drives in runs. And arm. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, I know that from MLB The Show. I remember – probably four or five years ago when Yachty was like hitting really well still um and it was like who's the best catcher in baseball and they threw Yachty and Salvi and JT in the conversation I always like dislike JT because I always thought like probably a biased thing I want Yachty to be number one but also we don't see JT a whole lot we see the Phillies twice a year and And no one likes the Phillies yeah exactly so I was kind of hated on him but I mean the stats show it um He's a uh, very, very good catcher. Yeah, well, he's also was part of that massive trade to, to uh, the Phillies from Miami. Oh, so that's right. They might have been Florida at that time. Wow, I, for, yeah. I just pictured him in a Phillies uniform. I forgot about yeah. this. It's crazy. Here's another one. Like, Rimulto, Ozuna, Stanton, Yelich were all on the same team. I think there's another guy on there, too. I mean, they had the pitcher. They had D Gordon, too, and he was, like, yeah. good. Yeah, the Jose Fernandez before he passed yeah. away, too. They, or they had some guy at first baseman who was, like, good for, like, two years and just hit bombs. Someone did you, did you see Sandy the other day through nine innings shutout? Oh, yeah. Just, he didn't get the win. Uh, 
Just Sandy's a. Uh, can you imagine if you had him in the race right now? <laughs> can you imagine? Well, Michael. Okay, number two for me, Wilson Contreras. Um, good player, on an awful team though. A team I just hate with passion, but uh, he's been really good. Twenty-one home runs, fifty-seven RBIs last year in one hundred twenty-eight games. Two thirty-seven batting average, three forty on base. So he has this really good on base percentage, and his career average is two sixty. And he's playing really good this year, as AJ was saying, 277 average, 403 on base. Um, and he, I think it's guaranteed he's going somewhere because the Cubs are not looking mm -hmm. – like when we played the Cubs, I couldn't name a single person on their team except like Contreras. But, yeah, really good player. Wisdom. Good, def Yeah, Wisdom. Schwindel. Madrigal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he's a good defender too. He hasn't won a gold glove probably because he – it's a little uh, too uh, crazy with his arms. Yes. He also got unlucky being in the same league as Yachty for yes this long. And there's a lot of good defensive catchers, I would say. Yeah, yeah I have uh, Salvador Perez at two. Uh, I mean, great year last year. He's been really solid throughout his entire career. But this year he's been horrible. I mean, it's really bad. <laughs> Still in for a little power. Um, but, yeah, his average is really, really not not great. Yeah, um, his on base percentage for his whole career has been kind of two nine nine. Yeah, it's yeah. Not, good. not great. But yeah, um, he's got potential, and like we talked about, he's probably going to end up DH and fairly mm -hmm. soon. So maybe his offensive numbers will go up after that. But yeah. so Salvi was my number one, and like you mentioned, this year he's batting two of three with eight homers, um, twenty five RBIs. But this last year, holy crap! <laughs> like. Absolutely insane. 48 homers and 121 RBIs. Uh, I don't know if the juice thing that you were talking about, if that's the – I mean – He had to have done something. Like, at least – like oh, he's had out. 70 RBIs in every yeah. every year where he's played a full year. Yeah. So maybe one. And 20-plus homers in just about all of them. So, yeah. dude, dude's been a – I mean, look at the averages too. 289, 280, 288, 297, 323, 328. I mean, dude can absolutely rake. I think he's on the way to the Hall of Fame if he can continue staying healthy. Um, it does not feel like he's 32 to me going on to 33 because um, I honestly thought he was a lot older. You thought so? Thought he just he looks is. old. He does. He does look old. I thought he was a little older too. And then what you say, five gold gloves for the man? Yes. Um, defense has dropped off as he's getting older. But like we said, potential DH um, where if he can so like solely focus on hitting, mm -hmm. shoot, might have 30 plus homer, 100 RBI capabilities. So. I'm high on Salvi, even though he's like our what's it across the highway rival or whatever. Uh, highway Interstate Seven I seventy I seventy rival. Yeah, yeah, I hate the Royals. Um, my number one is uh, J T Ramuto, as AJ was saying, um, super durable, really good offensive catcher and defensive catcher. I just think he has, he's like best best of both worlds basically. Yes. Yeah, he's um, like. His career average is 274, and he hits – his on-base is 330, which I think a player at any position, they would take him. Mm -hmm. um, or they take that at any position. Um, last year, he hit 17 home runs, had 73 RBIs, which is really good for a catcher. The COVID year, he hit 266, had uh, 349 on-base, 11 homers, 32 RBIs. Then the two years before that, he had over 20 home runs, and one year he had 74 RBIs, and the other he had 83. And I, he's, he's not hitting amazing at the moment, but I think he'll pick it up and get back to what he's been doing. Because he's if you look at his stats, they've all been basically like the same years every single year. He's been super consistent and a super consistent defender, and I think he's the best catcher. Yeah, that's what I have as well. I mean, there's not really a whole lot else to say. He's one of the best catchers defensively, and he's probably the best offensive catcher minus Salvador Perez's last year. But, yeah. yeah. He's, nope. he's the best. I can't go against it. Again, I had Salvi, but JT's uh, Mr. Durable. Um, and like you said, best of both worlds. But let's keep it moving here with our Cardinals update. So uh, we mentioned it here a little bit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we lost all three to the Rays. That game one was my fault uh, with the Verhagen walk-off. Game two was a blowout. Uh, and I put in question mark here is the end of McFarland. Because, yes. dude, is, I don't know if you saw the inning. The ball didn't get out of the infield, and they gave up three runs. He forgot how many outs there were. 
Uh, I actually didn't see that. I didn't watch the game. I was wondering what was going on. Grab all what the day was this game? It was the second game. The second game. I don't Wednesday. know what day. I get all the days mixed up during summer. Um, but he had a ground ball to him. He came in mid- middle of the inning, and it was double play ball because the, the, a bat before that was a ground ball to Donovan. They threw home, bases were loaded. They got the guy 4 up. Ground ball to McFarland's on the next one. Like that, That's what was so frustrating is because McFarland's been giving up lasers this year, mm-hmm. and he finally got his ground balls like he needed, yeah. and he was just messing around. So he threw it to first base, and the guy came home, and he was just like lost. And then there was two infield singles after that. It was just like a brutal inning to watch. And um, we lost 11 to three. And then yesterday, yesterday we lost two to one. Uh, Michaelis was fantastic. Uh, but their Shane McClanahan was, I was watching it. He had, he was hitting 99 in the eighth inning. Jeez. He was just throwing gas. Um, he only threw like 90 pitches, didn't he? Yeah. Both of them, actually. Yeah. Yes, yeah. They were yeah. both, the game uh, was Michaelis like had that. nine strikeouts, too. That's a rarity for him. Michaelis pitch. Our pitchers are are pitching good, except just a couple guys like mm-hmm. McFarland. Send them get Ron Rondone up here, uh, or or uh, who's that guy? There, Zach Thompson. He came when he came and pitched. He's still the here. Cubs. Is he still here? I don't. They interviewed him like two days ago. So oh, I think he's, I think he still wasn't pitching well wherever he was. No, was he, yeah. he had like a four sixty oh, right yeah. on there. You looked good when against the Cubs. He looked really good. Um, I say you gotta send McFarland. Whitigren's been not great either. The thing with McFarland though is you signed him for two years, so you're just gonna eat the money. How much did we sign him for? That I don't remember how much it had come. It had been probably like, too much. It was. I remember thinking it was too much. Yeah. Trade him. I was especially after that was like his first even like mediocre year. Last yeah. year. yeah, yeah. It was hard. Like if you're Mo to not resign him though after doing that. Yeah. Because Luis Garcia, too, was ridiculous, and we let him go. I thought he was, like, solid, yeah. like, more solid than McFarlane in previous years. Luis, yeah, he was yeah. he was better than McFarlane. So before. one year, two and a half. Oh, it's only one year? Oh, one. Oh, yeah. Adios, yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, I will say there's a couple positives to take from the series. O'Neal is back. And he's been hitting. He's been hitting. Had a couple hits, had a homer. Um In game two, well, I believe. He had all our RBIs in that uh, when we three. lost 11-3. Yeah. Also, you know, it was not a good game when the only pitcher who did not give up a run was Yadier Molina. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is actually kind of wild. McFarland has had three, like, really solid years, all of them three years apart. So his third year – or his second year in the league, he had a 2.76 ERA and pretty good whip. And then four years later, he had a 2 ERA – and was really, really solid. And then three years later, it's really good. Wow. And yeah. All so it's years, like people just kind of forget the, about him. Yeah. All <laughs> yeah, the after all the just like, oh, yeah. Easy. So he has um, very little room for air because he throws 88, 89. Mm-hmm. So if he's not low in that zone with it, yeah. or even low, maybe out of the zone a little bit. Yeah. It's tanks being hit off. It's not so. like he has like a Wainwright curveball that mm-hmm. you can just throw out there. And in an era where you have to face three hitters and lefty specialists aren't a thing, really, mm-hmm. you could get away with, you know, we, Gallegos pitches well against lefties usually. Uh, Henesis has been pitching well against both lefties and righties. Yeah. If you can get another guy, maybe that's a trade piece, not McFarlane, but look, yeah. to, go, look to go get a guy that yeah, can I think we got a lefty got on. So, um, but yeah, like we said, O'Neill's back. He looked really good. Made a couple of really poor plays in the outfield, really, but I, it might just be rust. He's knocking off. I don't know. Um, but Carlson is back. He was batting eight thirty three in AAA. Eight thirty three. He was, he was hitting homer. really good before he left. Was he just five for six? Yeah, <laughs> but still eight thirty three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, because at the beginning of the year he was all he didn't hit good, but then he was like hitting over three hundred over a stretch, and then he got hurt. Mm-hmm. But also, I didn't realize he uh, finished last year with, like, a 266 average. And he actually had a really good year. Yeah. So, the lineup we have today, besides Kisner instead of Yachty, that's the lineup I want moving forward. I would bump everybody up because Donovan's in the sixth spot today. I would move him in the ninth spot. Would you rather have Donovan second? He gets on base. But he doesn't hit for power. I wouldn't have Gorman DHing. Unless it's a lefty, I would have Albert still. But you'd have Albert DH against a righty. Against uh, lefties. Yeah. Yeah. But today – And then have Gorman against righties. Yes. Yeah. So today we're facing Castillo, who's kind of had our number. I don't know if you've seen the stats. He's been really good against us. Um, but 
I think it's yeah, Edmund Gorman, uh, Goldie, Goldie. O'Neill, or Goldie Nado O'Neill. And they have Donovan in the sixth spot. Carlson. Carlson. I wish Carlson was sixth. Yeah, I would have gone Carlson and then Yachty, then Bader. No, probably Bader than Yachty. Because I feel like if Bader gets going, Yachty's going to slow him up on the base pass. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I think I think Yachty's kind of good. You could do like a hit and run with yeah. Um, with Bader? Yeah. But also, you, like, you, you'd you be more prone to steal, too, because you're so slow. And if you have Donovan in that ninth spot, I know they're – I think what their idea is, like, have Donovan bat before Carlson get on base. Mm. Like, give uh, an opportunity for Carlson to drive him in, whatever yeah. it may be. But if you put Donovan in the ninth spot, it's like another leadoff hitter, and then you turn the order over and you got Edmund there. It's mm-hmm. just – and you get a couple guys on for, you know, Goldie and all these boys. So I am liking it because Donovan is a high on base and gets on base. Yeah. Um, Carlson's always had a really good on base percentage. So we have a bunch of guys who are like, or watching the ball really good. Cause I think our top pe- people in walks were Donovan was number one, like walk percentage. Then it was yeah. like Goldie, Arenado, Gorman, and then like Edmund. Mm-hmm. So that's like most of our. I, even though we kind of sucked it up here in, in Tampa, I, I feel like we're at. Oh, I because do. we're getting everyone back. Because guys, the Brewers have lost six straight. And so we didn't lose any ground. It's still Let's a, go. It's still a happy <laughs> We lost three straight. Yeah. yeah. Lose ground. Um, little couple updates on the minors. Ivan Herrera uh, in AAA is batting 323. He's like the next upcoming catcher, Ooh, yeah. which is good to hear. Um, Alec Burleson still raking, batting 320. And then a name we have not mentioned here is Connor Capel. He's in AAA. He's an outfielder. Really good speed. So this is our stats this year. He's batting 271 with eight homers, 24 RBIs, 14 stolen bases. So he's another guy that you don't know if he'll ever see it with us, but you ever wonder why trade him and be awesome. Exactly. Why yeah. like we called up that Robertson guy in the middle of the year instead of like someone who could actually Oh Kramer. I know I know he was only up for like a game, but like we, we got rid of him. You can see that? Did we? We designated him for assignment. Good because he sucked. Yeah. <laughs> Even in the minor, he was batting like 220. Yeah, and he looked goofy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but our next three start tonight. Uh, at home versus the Reds. I think we have the Pirates after this, too. So So we should win six in a row. So we'll lose five out of six. (laughs) Um, I'm not going to say a thing. We need to win five of those. Yes. That'd be nice. I don't know any updates on Steven Matz or Hicks, either. They should be close. Flaherty's had a – wait, we talked about his rehab assignment last episode. He should be coming up soon to pitch again. I think we got to trade for a starter. I I was thinking about this. I'm like, our lineup is – we have probably one of the be- like better offenses we've if had. If they're clicking, yeah. yeah. Like, I know everyone, like, we still kind of complain about the offense because it's – I think we were so, like, in love with, like, Albert when he was here. And yeah. Those times. We had Edmonds and Roland. They are just all, like, hitting bombs every time. But I think we're, like, top 10 in offensive rank. I, I I'm agree. pretty sure. And in defense. Oh, oh, you mean actually, like – Like, legit. I think okay. we're top 10, like, up there. Yeah. And, like, runs per game and, like, team average. Yep. We haven't seen those. I mean, we didn't score well this last series, but yeah. Tampa is a good team. Yeah. Um, and they have a lot of depth pitching wise. Uh, but we haven't seen those up and downs like we saw last year, you know? Yeah. Where it was like those those feast or famine type moments. Well, that's because we our whole pitching staff got hurt last year. Cardinals mm-hmm. are 10th in runs, 10th in hits. Woo, there you go. Just got it. Right on the border. Um, other news from around the league, though. Have to start because we always feel. I feel like I always start with the Angels. They had lost fourteen straight uh, and they finally were, broke it. And they fired uh, their manager Joe Madden. I wanted to see what you guys thought about that. Is that is that like a? I don't know, is like a whatever move. Is that a bad move? Good I guess move? they're probably just doing it because just to spark something. But yeah. I like Joe Madden's history. He's been successful. Yeah, exactly. So I don't. Well, did you hear what Albert said about him? What he was like, I could care less about Joe, <laughs> which like I mean, it shocked me. Um, but he didn't go out of I – mean, when he left L.A., it didn't go – it wasn't like a pretty ending yeah. how he left L.A. because he was struggling and they mm-hmm. – I think they DFA'd him. Uh, that's what they did with Albert. Mm-hmm. And then he signed with uh, the Dodgers. But yeah. um, the Phillies have now won seven straight after their Joe Girardi fire. Uh, the Braves have won eight straight. So, I think – I mean, Okuna's back and he's playing really well. So, yeah, really they're, they're starting to really get it going. Um, everyone in the NL Central are on a losing streak. So the Brewers have lost six straight. We've lost three straight. Pirates and Cubs have lost three straight, and the Reds have lost two straight. It's got to end tonight. We're playing yes. the Reds, so um, yeah, good or bad. We have a bullpen start. Yeah, had Pol- 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 was a starter in the minors. He was. 
that's, that's what I was telling my dad the other day. Like, Except he works so slow. His ERA is good, though, isn't it? I know. Just let him pitch. I, mean, yeah, I wonder. Probably not after today, though, that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder what their plan is, though. I wonder if they uh, – I wonder if this is like a – like opportunity, like what's that? What's the word? Like a grasp the opportunity. Yeah, like a like an opportunity for him to take the job mm-hmm. um, instead of instead of maybe Hicks, maybe throw him in the bullpen. Hicks has to be. Well, when Flaherty I comes agree. back, Hicks is in the bullpen. I just I like Hicks is like health. <clears throat> I mentioned that yeah. you know, like yeah. having the schedule, but also Hicks. But, he could maybe solve some of our bullpen problems exactly. too. But like, hopefully, yeah. And then Matt's will. As you said, he'll get you that four ERA yep. and just pump out in it. Yep. Um, and then the last thing MLB wise that I want to talk to you guys about was I have five, six teams. I have one from each division. Quick little pretender, contender. Contender, pretender. Yes, I said it opposite. <laughs> yeah. um, the San Diego Padres, contender, pretender. I think they're a contender. I think they're a contender. Okay. They're I, good. They got good offense. They're gonna get Tatis back. And if they, they get have, Tatis back to what he was, they're a contender. And they have. They have solid pitching, I think. Oh, yeah. They have depth. Musgrove, Snell, yeah. Darvish. Uh, the Milwaukee Brewers, contenders, pretenders. By contenders, I mean actual World Series. I agree, pretenders. Pretenders, just agree. because their pitching staff is contenders, but mm-hmm. their offensive position players, pretenders. Yep, I 100% <laughs> agree. Pretender for me as well. The Philadelphia Phillies. With all due respect. Phillies, pretender. Pretender. Pretender for me as well. They always should be contenders, mm-hmm. but they always underperform. It's awesome to watch. You know who I think is overrated? Dude. Aaron Nola. Bryce Harper. I agree. <laughs> Aaron Nola always has like a 4 20 30 ERA. Um, but he strikes out a lot of guys, so it looks good. Uh the Seattle Mariners. <laughs> you seriously put him on this list? Yeah, I'll put him on the list. Contender, pretender. 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 Okay. Are you gonna say contender? No, but they're getting hot. So how, keep, how many games back are they? Keep an eye. Just keep an eye. You know what I picture them doing? I picture them. Yeah, I picture them being the 2011 Cardinals. Something like that. I picture like a wild card run. So mark it. What's today? June 10th, 2022. The Mariners are making a deep postseason run. At least uh, they have one uh, good thing is Julio Rodriguez is going to play him. It's so fun to watch, man. Way better than he did at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Two more teams, the Minnesota Twins. Tough one. They've been playing good. Are they first in their division? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like 10 games over still. Mm. When the Toronto won two out of three against it's Toronto. It's not like they have bad position players. I don't, I don't, I don't know what they're I can name so. one starting pitcher, Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray is – and uh, they have some funky lefties <laughs> that's pitching today. I'll but, say pretender. I, I'll say I think, pretender. Ooh. I think I think they'll get in the playoffs, but I don't think they'll. I think they could maybe win a couple rounds. I'm gonna go pretender because their their staff kind of worries me a little bit. Um, and the last thing I have, have uh, the AL leading batting average guy, Luis. Oh, Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the last team I had was the Tampa Bay Rays. Think they can win a World Series? No. I don't think a lot of people thought they could win a World Series when they actually were in the World Series, mm-hmm. but. God, I'm just gonna go contender because I just somehow find a way to they win. Do. Like they, they're <laughs> like they all look like pretenders, but they yes. contend. I mean, we I think we had the game on the other night. We we're like, who is that? <laughs> like yeah. we're like three different. The guys. guy with the home run, I never heard of him. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just hard for me because they don't have fans. It's like they're gonna yeah. have fourteen thousand people in the stadium if they make. How's that a home field advantage? Yeah, I change pretender. <laughs> okay, I'll probably go pretender as well because. They don't have the the ace. They do a lot of uh, five inning starts and then bullpen, which is very successful with them. But you need that guy that's the stopper in the postseason. Is Glassnell like. hurt? Yeah, he's still hurt. He's um, good. But McClanahan's been good. That Drew Rasmussen's guy's been yeah. really good. Um, the I have pretender as well. Maybe the uh, having no fans is actually good. There's no pressure on the players. That is, this is, you guys, this is like, a, I know we're talking about baseball, but that's my, like, theory with DJ in Clemson, because when he came in, it was COVID, and there's, like, no fans. I don't think you can handle the pressure. Huh. I didn't think about that. That's true, though, because there were more Cardinals fans there the other night in Tampa. Yeah. Um, so let's do a quick. Yeah, little... they're honoring Albert and Yachty, and there's, like, all the Cardinals fans <laughs> yeah. are pumped. Let's do a, a the very. The Bay fans are like, who's that? <laughs> very quick NHL um, 
update here. The Avs, I don't know if we mentioned they they swept the Oilers. And we did. Did we? Um, and then the Lightning, after being down 2-0, have won the last three. Yeah. Just came storming back. Um, so, you guys, do you think it's going to be Lightning Avs? Yeah. I, I wanted so. the Rangers to win. I even thought the Lightning would win when they were down 2-0. I wanted the Rangers – or I, I – Hoped the Rangers would, but also I didn't because I think Tampa has a much better chance of beating the Avs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that'd be I a agree. good matchup. I think it's be really. I think it's go seven. Yeah, I think it really does. And the but, Lightning better win. I can't yeah. have Stan Kroenke winning two championships. Oh, in brutal. He doesn't care though. So he couldn't care less if they win But he gets more money. Well, yeah, that's, yeah. He does care about that. He cares. I think that's he all he cares about. Cares money. about. Yes. Um, I don't have much else to say though. The Lightning came back really late last night. I think it was the last two minutes. And they wasn't there some guy on the Rangers have. who missed a wide open goal. Who? Someone on the Rangers. I don't know. I just saw Spit and Chicklets post something. It was a picture of a Rangers guy and the puck's right here. And there's like the goal. The school is on the other side. It's like I think I could have tapped. He just missed it. I guess. I don't know if it like, oh. if that actually was in that game. Yeah, I don't know. But they're like good morning Rangers fans or something. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Second period. <laughs> Yeah, I told you guys I have migraine, so I could not stay up. I went to bed. I was like, I can't watch this. Yeah. No, I, I got to watch the second and third last night. That's about it. Um, but hopefully next episode we're talking lightning abs and pr- making our predictions for that. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have a side segment, boys, for uh, for us today. Pulling it up here. You want me to tell a funny story while you're pulling it up? Yeah. I have so, pulled up, but you can tell it. <laughs> so I, I guess my – Ty and Jonathan. So I went and played golf with them, and Ty's brother. And Jonathan hasn't played golf in like four years. So we're out there just for fun. It's like our last time, last time I'm going to see him before I move. We're on a hole. Jonathan's up, goes up to drive. And he's like, he says, uh, just thought, or no thoughts, just lasers. Uh-huh. When he swings and hits it, his club head breaks off. And goes, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. I mean, I've been like thinking about it like ever since then. I'm like, should we make like a shirt? No thoughts, just lasers. I've never heard of like, is that a normal thing? I the, think you just said it. He just gave up. I don't know. Of the of the club breaking though. Is oh, that, I've done that it's before. happened, yeah. I I, I don't don't is that a normal thing? I did that with one of my roommates' clubs. Okay. Like, oh, yeah. It happens, I think, if the club gets really old, like you're hitting a bunch, or if yeah, you just oh. like it was like a demolished 40, the it was like a 40 year old club, so I didn't feel too bad. Wow. I went to Goodwill and bought another one. So. Dang. But like, I, I'll, I'll like just randomly think about it these last few days. I just start cracking up. That's, that's really funny. Probably just like, like, I was probably the hardest I've lasted in a really long time. Yeah. It was funny. Um, so I have a segment called Draw the Line today. Uh, I mentioned it to you guys, but I didn't mention what we're drawing the line for. Yeah. So are we the, using pen or pencil? <laughs> no writing involved. Um, the, read. the first one I have is it's like three questions, I guess. And you guys will give me a, a price money amount that it would take to do it um, on the last two. And then this first one, it's kind of like a would you rather, I guess, on the first one. So the first one, would you be rather would you rather be given one mil right now? Or the chance of winning one billion if you score 10 points in an NBA game and you get to play the 82 games? Like, you get to play 82 games in a season? Yes. 10 points in one game. You have to score 10 plus in one game. Are you guaranteed to not get hurt? Yeah, sure. And guaranteed to play the, every yep. minute of every game? Let's go like a normal 35 minute. Oh, yeah. Give me the billion dollars. You think I'm not going to get hot from three to one yeah. night? Wait, if, I, if I'm on a team with, like, do I get to pick what team I'm on? I don't care what team I'm on. As soon as I get the ball, the ball's going up. I'm shooting every single time I touch it. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking <laughs> or I'm taking dollars. it to the basket and I'm getting fouled. I can make some free throws. But, it, yeah, so if you don't get you the 10. You're going to get fouled. What? You get swatted to the next universe. Hey, blocking fouls. I think that I didn't mention, but. Or if they're in the bonus, they just do a little reach in. That's, that's my game. Right so what if, what if, like, the guys, like, don't want you to get that? that billion and they're just trying to lock you up <laughs> i'll say i'll nah, give you i'll my give team, you like my 10 team have my back <laughs> screen, so. but yeah so if you don't get the 10 points you get nothing yeah it's fun you're going you're going the bill yeah you just get a season in the nba that's the memories i guess yeah that's true do you get paid an nba salary no the minimum 
but you would get the you would get recognition so you could be famous afterwards too. give me the yeah give me the chance yeah. of the billion okay i'd yeah, probably I take I think a mill put up because points i think i could hit four threes in an nba game if I, I play 35 minutes i think like marcus smart would just absolutely lock me up it would make no sense for their best defender to guard the worst player on the other team that's which true. would be me yeah, that's true by, by a long shot that's true uh, my second one was how much money would it take um, to receive a prime Chapman 105 mile per hour fastball to the dome? You won't die. I'm out. Nothing? No. No. <laughs> no. It would kill me. It doesn't even matter. But yeah. you, got, you got a helmet. You got the chin strap. Only a million? No, just how much? No amount of money can do that. Hell no! I I couldn't function all day yesterday for my oh, basket. Yeah, that's true. You, yeah. How about you? God, I don't know. I probably had. I know I've had at least one concussion. If I had more, I yeah. I'm not. I'd rather uh, live than uh, live for like five yeah. more years than I'm going like a mill. They'd put me on bed only a mill. If I did that. Taking the, I'm taking the chin strap on. If I did, it'd be like a trillion. A trillion. I'd take one anywhere else. From, like, from the neck down. What not, about not necks out too? And like the, oh, the yeah. back. Oh yeah. I would take it. Right in the knee. For how much? <laughs> oh no, I'm saying how much. Yeah. Ooh. Right in the lat. Lat. Right in the ass. Is that gonna break anything? <laughs> mm -mm. It's, it's gonna that. be a big bruise. Big it's about bruise. It. Oh, oh, just a bruise. Wait. Oh, I do that for like 10 minutes. I mean for the lat. I mean, how much where's the lat, right? Right here. I feel like you break a rib. Could break a rib. Could break a rib. I'll wear one of those like padded breaks a rib. Mm. Better breaks than get shoot in my lap. I'm going two hundred thousand. Really? Yeah. If it doesn't break anything, I'd say like ten thousand. Really? Yeah. If it breaks my ribs, probably like fifty. That's true though. If it doesn't break anything, you just got a bruise. A couple, yeah, about a month. That's not bad. Ten k. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my last one I had, which I think is my personal favorite, I came up with this and I'm pretty proud of it. Um, <laughs> stupid. How much money to play goalie in one NHL game in today's era without a mask? With a mask? Be the goalie in today's era without a mask. No, I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it? Matter how much money. I put 100 mil. Can I just like stand behind the goalie or the, the goal? Or does it like actually just let all the goals in? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's right. I mean, you guys can do whatever you want at that point. Well, me, I've never like played hockey. Or, well, I guess you guys haven't seen me play hockey. Yeah, right. Like I just don't know really friends. much about hockey. I'd probably die, but I would die. They, I would dodge the pucks, not I, try to. Stop I did them. this because they used to not have yeah. goalies with masks, but the obviously the shots weren't as crazy. Mm -hmm. Still extremely dangerous, but not like. Oh. They hit him so far. No, nope, nope. like 100 miles. Yeah. No price? Actually, maybe like a million. Because I think if it's like, like if it looks a little risky, I just get the hell out of the net. Yeah, I think I do. Go, I kind of like play your, a forward position. Yeah. <laughs> I like your 100 mil. 100 mil? Pull the goalie. Yeah. I mean, you get down by so much that you have to pull the goalie. Just leave. So, then... <laughs> um, so yeah, that was my draw the line segment. Yeah, I'll get I'll get benched in like three shots. <laughs> yeah. mil. Or is it like you have to play the whole the whole 60 minutes? Yeah. Um, let's move on to some NBA here. So uh oh man, it's not gonna go well for me, but I have to mention it, boys. Um, today's the anniversary. Oh, shut the hell up. Of the greatest championship in sports history. And okay. If you guys disagree, but like yeah, I disagree. What what past is that as the greatest championship? 2019 Stanley Cup final. For us, but nobody got, nobody else would think. That. Uh, 2000, the card 2011 World, World, series? World Series. Yes. No one would think that other than us either. Yeah, I would disagree. That's like one of the what about you? Can honestly say I I hate that I'm going to say this and I regret it. Mm -hmm. But uh, didn't the Red Sox come back 3-0 against the Yankees in the ALS? It was ALS. LCS, yeah. and then they beat yeah. swept us. Yeah. That's better than 3-1. Yeah. So can I can I break it down to you though? No. I do you not. Owen 32 were in NBA teams when they were down 3-1. Yeah. I guess the best team in NBA history. 73 and 9. That's uh pretty insane. Take wait, 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 wait. Take LeBron off that team. Put in another player. 
you guys are talking about that's one of the greatest things in NBA history. <laughs> probably. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I'd probably still take um I, I agree, like the Cardinals 2011. I just think us, we were, we witnessed it and it was unbelievable. But like other people would probably look past it. But I, I, it's, it's unbelievable. And you guys probably didn't watch the series, did you? I think I did. Yeah, I did, did actually. You? So, yeah, she did. So after, after they were down, I, I brought this up. It is the anniversary, but you sent that video of the guy, the fan cussing out LeBron or whatever. Yeah. I thought, thought it was ironic because, like, Thompson was complaining that Boston fans were uh, saying the F-bomb. They, they did. They chanted f Draymond. You could hear on my yeah. TV. <laughs> so he, he was complaining about that. And the, and the, he's, like, saying the F-bomb with kids in the crowd. In the post-game presser, Draymond says the S-word with his kids sitting right next to him. So it's <laughs> like – so I thought that was funny. And you also – the S-word or the F-word? S. Well, he said the F-word. <laughs> but, um, no, so – Back then, uh, Draymond called LeBron the B-word uh, in the game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he called him that. LeBron gave him a shove, whatever. And then afterwards, Clay Thompson, this is when they won, went up 3-1. Clay said, I guess his feelings just got hurt, whatever. And they told LeBron, LeBron does this, like, laugh, just laugh about it. And then you guys have seen the meme, him wearing the sunglasses, has the stat 0-32 and, and down 3-1. I just want to mention that game five, 41, 16, and seven. Game six, 41, eight, and 11. And game seven, 27, 11, 11. Dang, wow. I'm just saying, man, mm. it's, it's the greatest comeback in sports history. Uh, you can hate the man, but he led every player in every statistical category that series. Turnovers, mm. too. He had the ball mm. in his hands. I was playing 48 minutes. <laughs> Um, someone else would be like, oh, they had a lot of turnovers. No, no, no. no. So you I mean, can hate Russell LeBron. Westbrook turns it over a lot? Because he has the ball in his – Yeah, I know. Westbrook turns it over a ton. But I um, just wanted to, to bring up the uh, greatest championship in sports history. I know many people watching don't hate LeBron as much as you too, so uh, they're with me. You but be surprised. Uh, no, what's happening right now, the Celtics won game three, and they're up 2-1 in the series. Um, I didn't have any stats of what happened that night. I got to watch some of it. I think it was like a what 16 point game yeah 116 to 100 uh curry had 31 yeah thompson 25 wiggins 18 what about draymond uh two points four rebounds three assists <laughs> yeah because he, he said that's what he said i played like ass that's what he mm -hmm. said um jalen brown had 27 tatum had 26 oh they played really good jalen brown had 27 9 and 5 jason tatum had 26 6 and 9 um, Marcus Smart had 24, 7, and 5. I don't think JB gets enough praise as he should. Yeah, he should, should get more love. Because I think he's I think he's playing at the Tatum level. I think he's yeah. a better defender as well. Um, but he got game four. Probably Warriors. The, NBA, the NBA always is uh, rigged. Yes. <laughs> they find a way to get it to game sevens every single time. Uh, yeah. You can disagree, but I think if you look at a stat, I think the majority of them go to game seven. I'm trying to think of. And then besides, of course, the years you'll probably complain that, you know, LeBron lost, got swept by KD and the boys. So those didn't go seven. Shocker, yeah. right? LeBron's yeah. terrible. Yeah. Terrible player, terrible human being, right? Yeah. Um, Actually, I think. Sort of better myself. <laughs> like you're talking about like the greatest comeback. Like they had a great team. And they got bad down to a really bad start. But what about like. The greatest postseason run of all time. If we had to go through Dirk Nowitzki, yeah, went right. through, yeah, like that. and LeBron like averaged fifteen in the finals. Oh yeah, twenty fourteen oh, LA Kings. Dud. <laughs> Did bring up hockey? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean they were down. They were down three zero in the uh, yeah. first round against yeah. the President's Trophy winner, or President's yeah President's Trophy winner. Who was that? Sharks. And then they won four in a row, and then they won the cup. Yeah, they're the eight seed. Yeah. So. Um, but no, that that Mavs series was wild. Uh, Dirk was unbelievable. Yeah, but I will go with the with that Cavs comeback. You're a big you you praise K Love. Um, yeah, you eight, don't give him any credit. Eight I points per was... game in that finals with six rebounds. That's just nobody averaged more than ten besides Kyrie. You know you can play defense with like oh, he's a, do more oh, stuff. He's a god awful defender though. Who that, locked, who locked him? Up, locked up. What's his face at the end? Curry. Yeah, that last possession was well, like a. 
four point game and game was over anyway. But sure, sure, sure. Uh, the LeBron hate will always exist for you too. Uh, he's he's been my my guy since I was a kid. Um, but no, I have the Warriors in Game Four. Uh, I, I think they'll they'll bounce back. Um, kind of like I think it's going to be kind of like a performance they had in Game Two where they lost Game One. Yeah, for, I mean, kind of a rough Game One, and they'll bounce back. But um, let's finish it up here with our next NFL team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I have them at eleven and six this year. What about you guys? I am 13 and four. Wow. They have a tough schedule. They're good, though. I had 13 and five, and I realized it's <laughs> not 18 games. Wait, 13. Wait, did so I do the math? Now, no, you're right. No, you're right. And then, so uh, now I don't remember if I had them with, because uh, I think I counted losses. So I guess I had them at 12 and five. Okay. So we're all roughly the same. Yeah. But I looked up the strength, strength uh, of schedule, and they had the seventh easiest schedule. But you're the one who always pulls up the games. Read some of those teams, man. Like, oh, I don't know how it's seventh easiest. I was uh, – I thought it headed up. No. Oh. No, it's it's extremely tough. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean. Fill the time. Um, <laughs> all right. We're, we're getting in here. Dallas, they played, they played the Cowboys. The yeah, they're going to beat us. We'll and, and Dallas? Yeah, we'll lose. We lose so many home games. Um, the Saints win. Green Bay win. Kansas City Chiefs. Hopefully they win. I have them as a But loss. I mean, even oh, those teams. I didn't realize the Superdome is now Caesar Superdome. Yeah. Actually, I did see that because I just drove by it the other day. <laughs> I did not put that together though. But no, they. I mean, read those four teams off. I mean, Cowboys, Chiefs, Packers, Saints. I mean, that's yeah. Oh, these Cowboys, America's team. Two and two, I think. They'll beat the Packers. Like they just have Aaron Rodgers now. Um, That's, yeah. Falcons, easy. Pittsburgh Steelers, I think easy. Duh. Panthers, easy. I think they'll beat the Ravens. I'm going to change it to 13 and 4. Okay. That's what he had. Instead of 13 and 5. Right, no, he, I had 12 and 5. Seahawks, easy. <laughs> no, they'll, they'll destroy us. Yeah. Um, Browns, depends if I think they'll win, but if Deshaun Watson's on the team, the Browns could win. Mm hmm. Saints, I think I just had them beating them twice just because. I, I had them splitting. 49ers, Adam Beaton, just because I think they're going to have Trey Lance start. It's still a tough team. Yeah, Bengals. It's a tough one. Tough, but they went 9-7 and seven last year. Yeah. 9-8. Let's no, nine and eight. I think their, their strength of schedule. No, 10-7. and seven. I think their strength of schedule is seventh easiest because I think they're favored in these games. And they, they play home against, like, the – Bengals. They play the Panthers yeah. and Falcons twice because of the same division. Yeah. And but they I, play the Cardinals, which I think they'll beat the Cardinals. And I think because they're favored in these games because of the Buccaneers and they have Tom Brady, that, that makes their schedule easier. Yeah. But these teams are tough to me besides the divisional stuff. I also think they're going to beat the Cardinals because the Cardinals cannot play. They never play good at the end of the year. Yeah. No, I had them beat them. They, they start out and they're like yeah. slinging. They're like, oh, they're going to win the Super yeah. Bowl. And then Kyler. Yeah. Falls off a Kyler cliff. comes down to earth, yeah. But their roster, I wrote some – or their offense is good. They have Mike Evans – or last year they had the number two offense and number three defense and by points scored. Mm -hmm. They had fifth, like, overall defense, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, they have Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and they signed Russell Gage from Falcons. I, I put down Gage. Is, is Godwin good. healthy? Didn't he tear his ACL? I don't think so. Yeah, I didn't know if he was going to be back. And they have Luke Luke Fournette. Luke? Is his name Luke? Luke? I don't know who you're talking about. The running back. Leonard. 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 <laughs> yeah, there you go. Leonard Fournette. Yeah. Playoff Lenny. Come on now. Their defense is really good, too. They got Levante David and Devin White, who are, I'll say, elite. And then they have Vita Bay, who's just. Big boy. He is. There's no. I think he. Could be the best, I guess. Aaron Donald's a defensive tackle, but he's up there as best defensive tackle. Football is a weird, weird sport to me. That there was talk that Aaron Donald was going to retire after this last Super Bowl. Yeah, and he's 27, 28, or whatever he is, twenty nine. But no, they had the fifth best defense last year, like like we mentioned, and um, I put Tom going to be Tom on here. I think he's going to be the same, yeah, same old Tom Brady. They uh, was going to put. Oh, they're Super Bowl contenders. Mm -hmm. um, they drafted – they got offensive line help with their first pick. No, not their first pick. 
the first pick was Logan Hall, defensive line, in second round. They traded back, I think, and they got a guard, Luke Godecki, Godecki. And then they got a running back, a couple tight ends, and they also drafted a punter, hmm. who I believe was – See that crazy punter? Jay Camarda either played for Alabama or Texas A&M, but I know he just hits missiles. Okay. Yeah, my final analysis was that they're a Super Bowl contender. Um, and if they have the health, I think their offense is going to be insane. Yeah. Like always. But I think uh, – if Scotty Miller. If, yeah. Uh, if their defense can be that top five defense again, I think they could win a Super Bowl. Even though they kind of let me yeah. down. They lost to the Rams last year. I had them win it all. Yeah. Did you have them win it all? What? I don't remember. I marked it. I, I, yeah, I had the it. Cowboys winning it all. Yeah. yeah so I think I think you and I had the Buccaneers. I thought so. Maybe. I uh, I don't remember. I do think they are going to hurt with Chris Godwin out probably for yeah. a couple of games in the beginning because I had him on fantasy and Tom Brady loved him. Oh yeah, <laughs> really? He's that slot guy that PPR leagues. He got like Tom, over ten catches a uh, game. Uh, Tom just thrives with those uh, slot guys. But um, what what division we got next? NFC. We did east, we did south, west. west. Or I guess there's north too. If we want to, depends which one you want. Let's do west. So we get my Seahawks coming up here. Oh no, the, oh and 17. You know what? Um, <laughs> so I think they're going to start Geno Smith at quarterback. Really? And did you hear what he said the other day? What? <laughs> He's like, we have a championship squad here this year. I'm like, oh, Geno, no. <laughs> um, but no, Chris Carson. I'm really high on Chris Carson. He's hurt. He's always hurt. And apparently he might have to retire. I saw that this morning. Hmm. He's battling with his neck injury. And Pete Carroll said he's battling. So also, I'm really – I was fine. I was sad when Russell Wilson was uh, traded. Like, I was sad that it happened, but I was fine with it because I knew, like, I'm a Russ fan, so I want him to be successful somewhere. Yeah. But him posting all – I have to get him off Instagram. Him posting, like, him just – chatting it up with all these like Jerry Judy and Tim Patrick and I love it here in Denver. It's really starting to piss me off. He's always done that where he posts himself like it's working kind of cringy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. He's very he like cringy. talks to yeah he's... he like wants you like like yes because everyone said he's been like really tough since he's like I have to make sure everyone knows I'm still yeah. tough. Yeah Russ is, Russ gets kind of cringy. His his videos always last really long also and he posts videos with Sierra all the time where he's like talking to her more of a dirty way and he's like po- i don't know it's just a weird. the weirdest thing is whenever he was um there's that thing where he practiced after he hurt his finger he was just like running through the plays with like nothing i'm like come on on, on the field you're talking about yes. yeah i remember that it's like come on yep but we can go nfc west uh next they're always usually competitive <laughs> they're all pretty good except the seahawks yep I, I what said, team you want to do i agree let's do um we'll start with the bottom let's start with the seahawks Sure, you can do Seahawks. So, but besides that, uh, I guess we'll be back sometime early next week. You'll be in Washington area still. I think so. I'll be here and you'll be in Florida. I will be. So, we'll uh, see you guys on the Zoom and uh, we'll see you guys next time.